So I was supposed to be talking about union part two, like a part two of what we were going over last week. Uh, and I'm standing there during worship and the Lord said, that's not what I want you to talk about today. Um, so we're going to talk about healing. We're going to talk about physical healing. Uh, and one of the reasons, I'll just turn, turn that ask from the Lord into a little bit of a teaching moment for you. Um, I had lots of really great things to say. I think sometimes preachers say, I'm going to pivot what I'm going to talk about because they didn't spend time preparing. That was not the case, I will tell you. Uh, I had lots of really great things to say. You were going to be very impressed and you were going to learn a lot. <laughs> but but um, uh, we, we really don't have anything if we don't have obedience to Jesus. This is not my church. This is not Sean's church. And if ever we start acting like it, you need to leave. I will say that right now, and I will continue to say it. If ever we start acting like this, what is happening here belongs to us, you need to leave. Because we have left the reservation at that point. And what I love, I love Holy Spirit so much. I love him so much because he was talking to me about this and I was going back and forth and he was just saying like, no, you need to do this. And here's the other reason why I'm letting you in on this process. It's not to be like, oh, Aaron, here's the Lord because he's willing to pivot. Um, if I don't actually obey Jesus, then I have no authority on my life. I will say that again. If I don't actually obey Jesus when he tells me to do something, I have no authority on my life. And if he's actually put me here to help pastor and shepherd you guys, then um, not only is me disobeying what he's asking me to do wrong in the sense that he asked me to do something and I said no, but it affects you guys, which I'm not willing to do. So I love one, and, and I again, I just love Holy Spirit so much because when I tell you, I, you know, Sean and I try to stay in sync a little bit, right? I didn't want to come up here with him thinking I'm going to be doing one thing and then just be like, no, I'm actually going <laughs> to try to give people a little bit of a heads up, you know. Literally, not even two seconds after I finished, like the, the last words of the sentence leave my mouth. Uh, Brandon Leon comes up to me and says, like, hey, if I, I've got words of knowledge for healing. Um, can I send those to you? I have not talked to him this morning. I love Holy Spirit so much. Um, and I love moments like that. Because th there are times where the Lord just lets you know, like, I'm, I'm actually leading this thing. I'm actually leading this thing and I actually care. Um, we're going to talk about healing. I'm going to teach a little bit um, just because, uh, number one, I think it's helpful that we're all on the same page. Um, and also, depending on where you grew up in the church, you could just be fresh out of God doesn't heal people anymore. Uh, or you could be way on the other end of God only uses really special and anointed people to heal people. Um, neither, neither of those are true. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and it helps to stir faith uh, when you can actually look at it in the Word. Because there's, there's this unfortunate divide that we have created as human beings that says that um, you know, the, the written Word of God and the supernatural are somehow separate. I'll say that again because apparently some of us needed to hear it. There's a lie that human beings we have put into the church that's, and I'll put it another way, I'm more of a word guy or I'm more of a spirit person. You're both. You just have a preference. Which is fine. We have preferences. But don't go around making your preference out to be what the word of God is saying. Jesus was able to 
teach and theologize and engage with the Pharisees, and he was running circles around them. And he had power flowing from his life. If we're going to be unified with this Jesus, unified with this man, then we should expect to see both. Growth looks like both of those things. And that's not to say that I'm not going to fall into the other side of the ditch here and say that, you know, um, everybody needs to look like Todd White, as an example. If you don't know who he is, he's a healing evangelist. He gets word of knowledge on the street. He's leading people to the Lord left and right through power encounters. They're actually getting healed in their bodies through words of knowledge. Uh, sometimes we can fall into the trap of seeing somebody who's got a lot of success, quote-unquote, or fruit coming from their life, and we think, that must be what it needs to look like. I'm not saying that. Uh, if you actually try to, to use an analogy from Scripture, you can very easily become David trying to wear Saul's armor, which is not what you want to do. However, it's irresponsible of us if the Holy Spirit wants to move and power and heal people. It's irresponsible of us to have zero clue what's going on when that's happening. Does that make sense? All right. Some of you are a little unsure, and that is a-okay. I'm super okay with that. But we're going to do this together, okay? So if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to start in verse 1. Um, most of us ha are really okay with the idea conceptually that God can heal because we've grown up in a church culture that's really good about saying correct things. We want to be able to say, it was like, can, the moment you say, can God do X, your brain immediately goes, well, yeah. And we can mentally assent to that. But oftentimes, particularly just in Western Christianity, there's a difference between what we say we believe God can do up here and what our heart actually tells us he's willing to do. That's one of the things that union does. You, you get to actually spend time with him and be with him. You recognize he is so much better than you ever thought possible. He is so much better than you ever thought possible. So that's some of what I'm going to be addressing here today, just in this chapter, in this first chunk of the chapter. Starting in verse 1, when he, Jesus, came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. Right away, a man with leprosy came up and knelt before him, saying, Lord... If you are willing, you can make me clean. Reaching out his hand, Jesus touched him, saying, I am willing. Be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus told him, See that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Most of us, when, particularly when we approach healing, whether emotional or physical, most of us are in the, the spot of that leper. We've got really good theology, like, yeah, God can heal me if he wants to. Most of us don't even take the step of going to him and saying, Lord, if you, if you want to, I know you can do this. We are so afraid of disappointment. We're so unsure if we're being honest with ourselves, we're so unsure about his nature and his character that we don't even venture to ask. But this leper comes to him and he says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. That word willing in Greek is this word thalo, and it's beyond just a, are you sort of like, you know, can I, can I have your permission? Like, Jesus, can you sign here on the dotted line? And like, yeah, sure, I'm willing to do that and move on to the next thing. It, this word communicates something that has to do with the heart. It's, is it, do you, if you desire to, you can make me clean. He's saying, Jesus, I, I know what you're capable of. I've heard stories. You're turning Jerusalem upside down with the miracles you're performing. I know that you can do this. I don't know if you want to. And I love Jesus' response. Sometimes we're so afraid to ask God questions because we're, we're afraid that he's going to give us some sort of roundabout answer, that he's going to sort of dodge the question. Jesus responds directly. He uses the same word, I am willing, be clean. 
I thalo, I desire to, I want you to be clean, be clean. This is usually the point in this sort of a teaching where the first thing that starts popping up in your head is all the times that God didn't do something. Um, I don't see anywhere in scripture where we're allowed to create a theology around what didn't happen. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. What I'm not saying is that we're not allowed to ask questions. What I'm not saying is we're not allowed to go to the Father and say, I prayed, I did what I knew how to do, but this person didn't get healed. What's up with that? I, actually asking those sorts of questions is how we start to get revelation and breakthrough on how to address things moving forward. So please ask those questions. But don't allow the enemy to come and throw mud on a gift that God wants to give his people. So often we, we see the misuse of something, and because we're so afraid of being viewed a certain way, we just ditch the thing altogether. Healing is one of those big ones in the, in the American church. We've seen people use a legitimate gift to extort people, to get money out of people, to even when that's not happening, to build themselves up. They sort of use their gifts to fill in these spots in their insecurities and their personality. We see that and we're like, ew, that's gross. Everybody who does that must be like that, so I want nothing to do with that. That is error just as much as them misusing their gift. Is God good? He gave us a gift of healing. Is Jesus who he said he was? Yes. Scripture calls him Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Scripture says that by his stripes we're healed. Part of what's happening as we pray for the sick and as we contend for healing in physical bodies, part of what's happening is that Jesus is getting the reward of his suffering. I can feel you, some, some of you guys, your, <laughs> your brains are exploding a little bit right now as things are starting to stretch. That's okay. We're in this together. We're going to go after it. I want to touch on a few other things here. If you, if you go down, man, I'm getting caught up in technology. I just said if you scroll down, because that's literally what I'm doing in my phone here. If you go to chapter 9, starting in verse 1, so he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Just then, some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, have courage, son, your sins are forgiven. I want to take a quick pause there. Uh, a lot of times we won't pursue healing for ourselves because we start getting caught in this circular, like th this round of questioning internally. is like, I don't know if I have enough faith for that. Jesus counted his friend, this paralytic man's friends bringing him to Jesus. He counted that as faith. Literally you showing up, you raising your hand to receive prayer, you coming forward is faith. All of this is grace, right? I can't earn a healing. I can't do enough things. I can't cross off a checklist to say, now God has to heal me because that's manipulation. And last I checked, manipulating God tends to not work. <laughs> you showing up is faith. Verse 3, at this time, some of the scribes said to themselves, he's blaspheming, meaning nobody can... Forgive sins except God. Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus internally is going, uh, yeah, that's the point. But perceiving their thoughts, Jesus said, why are you thinking evil things in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he told the paralytic, get up, take your stretcher, and go home. So he got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were awestruck and gave glory to God, who had given such authority to men. 
What's the one thing that most of us have all the faith in the world for? That Jesus died for our sins so that we could be cleansed from them, freed from them, and be with him in heaven. The question Jesus is asking here is actually making a really powerful statement. He's saying, is it, is it easier to believe your sins are forgiven or to say, rise up and walk? Part of what he's making with this statement, he's saying, if you can believe that your sins can actually be blotted out, you've got faith for healing. Because let's break this down really quickly. When we say that we have faith for sins to be forgiven, we're saying that an infinitely holy God who gave us everything we needed to continue to follow him in the garden. He even gave us a choice. He said, literally, don't eat this and you'll be fine. Eat this and you will live. We broke that covenant with him. We made that choice as humanity. We said, we will take the tree that you told us not to eat from. Thank you very much. All, and, not, and let's just not even get into all the stuff that we know we've done. I've found when you start talking about sin, when you start talking about the gospel, there are some preaching circles that feel the need to like hammer like how bad you are. Most people don't need a reminder of how messed up they are. <laughs> I certainly don't need a reminder. Let's not even bring into the conversation all of that stuff, but it's there. But we very easily step into, yeah, Jesus died for me so that I could be cleansed from that. But for some reason, we have this really hard time with the idea that the God who spoke and you came into existence, the one who scripture tells us is literally upholding the world by the word of his power, and that's an active word there. He's liter right now, you and your seat are being held together because Jesus is thinking about you and choosing to keep you together. For some reason, we have a really easy time with this forgiveness of sins, but we have a really hard time believing that the God who knit you together in your mother's womb can pop a bone back into place. It's a little ridiculous, right? Some of you didn't answer because if you agree with me, you're like, shoot it, then I have to actually. <laughs> One more thing I want to touch on, and then we're going we're gonna to actually pray for some people here. I'm bouncing back into chapter 8, starting in verse 5. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible agony. He said to him, am I to come heal him? Jesus, as a side note, is really not about passive-aggressive questions. <laughs> Jesus, oh, he's just so sick. I don't know what I'm going to do. He's like, do you want me to come pray for him? <laughs> Lord, the centurion replied, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too, pay attention to this part, for I too am a man under authority, having soldiers under my command. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Hearing this, Jesus was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with so great a faith. I tell you that many will come from east and west to share the banquet with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus told the centurion, Go, as you have believed, let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that very moment. A couple of things there. Uh, Jesus ties healing, interestingly enough, not to power, but to authority in that moment. And with that, authority actually comes from submission and obedience, is what we get out of that. Because the centurion looks at Jesus and he's like, oh, he's able to do what he's doing because he, he has authority to do it. And he's having this exchange with Jesus, and he's like, I, I understand you don't actually have to come lay hands on him 
for him to be healed. And then he says why he knows that. He says, I too am a man under authority. And then he explains, I say to this one, go and he goes. I say to this one, come and he comes. And Jesus then turns and he starts talking about faith. So there's something in the kingdom where faith and authority, the, the obedience and the submission and the faith for healing, they're not quite as separate as we would probably want to delineate them to be. But he ties healing, again, to authority in this instance. Where am I going with this? I'll tell you, the Great Commission. As believers, we've been commissioned by Jesus to go into all the world, preach the gospel, teach them to observe everything that Jesus commanded the disciples to observe. So as we're submitted to Jesus, we get to then move in his authority. As we're submitted to Jesus, we get to then move in his authority. And can I tell you that Jesus hates sickness? Can I tell you that Jesus hates sickness? The word tells us in multiple places, he was moved with compassion and he healed them. He was not moved by, if I can heal enough people, I'll get their attention, and then they'll probably believe me because I've given them enough proof. He was moved with compassion. He sees people in their hurt. He sees people in their suffering and in their pain, not just spiritual, but physical. And it's from that spot he then moves and healing gets released. And you want to talk about union? You're one spirit with that man. You're one spirit with that man. I pray to God that I am messing you up in a really good way right now. So with that, uh, Paul said, I came to you with words, not with you know persuasive words, with wisdom, with eloquent preaching, but I came to you with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith would rest not on my words, but on the Spirit's power. And just as a personal thing, like I don't want to be somebody who talks a lot about Jesus but can't demonstrate him, do you? So, we're going to pray for some sick people. (laughs) Um, Brandon, if you could come up. So, I'm also aware that some of us, this is, you've been in environments like this where we're praying for the sick, where we're praying for healing. Others of you, you're like, I don't know if I should bolt for the door right now. But uh, with that, we're going to try to endeavor to explain what's going on as it's happening. Because the other thing that I'm not into is, you know, the... I even hate the verbiage, but the man of power for the hour, the guy with the mic up there just doing his thing and everybody's like, I have no clue what's going on, but that person fell over and that person is getting healed and that person's shaking and I don't know what's going on. So I, we're we're not going to do that. I'm going to do, we're going to do our best to explain to you what's going on and give you some context. So one of the gifts of the spirit that's listed in 1 Corinthians 12 is called a word of knowledge. That is a piece of factual information that the Holy Spirit reveals to a person supernaturally. So when we say a word of knowledge, a lot of times it's related to healing. So that's Brandon and myself here in a second, not having interviewed every person and you know had you fill out a card of what you need healing for and then reading it in the back, like nothing like that's happening. Uh, but the Lord's highlighting a few specific things saying, hey, I wanna heal this, have these people identify themselves so that we can pray for them because well, a couple of things. Number one, that identification helps build faith for what the Lord wants to do. When you identify yourself as somebody who's like, yeah, that's me, that lets people know it's like, okay, God's speaking. He, he wants to do something. These people are here. We're going to pray for them. Um, and it, you know, if you're the person who gets identified, it's like, oh, God sees me. Plain and simple. But I'm going to have this guy share what the Lord was showing him. All right, so uh, 
If you guys understood how unqualified I am to be here speaking to you, um, you know, how many of you guys know that when you go to play a sport, you warm up, right? You get your muscles warm, you take some at bats, and normally when we come up here, we will share some very simple words and we'll start out really, really easy. But the Lord told me very clearly that we are not going to do that. <clears throat> that we're actually going to go the opposite way. So let me tell you some of the things that are going on in my life, in my family. Uh, I currently have an ulcer, which is very uncomfortable and painful. And I can't tell you how many times I've prayed for people from this stage. And people have come to me and tell me all the stories of how they were healed. And it's like, the Lord loves you. I'm so, I'm so happy for you. I, almost every time I'm dealing with something, I get a word of knowledge to go after that thing and call that thing out. And I say, no, nah, that's just my thing. That's probably just me. Uh, but uh, anybody that has an ulcer or a stomach discomfort, uh, um, IBS, um, any kind of discomfort in their stomach, I just want you to stand, stand right now. All right, just put your hand on your stomach. All right, if you're, if you're by that person, just put your hand on them, please. Thank you. And I just want you to say, I bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord is going to encounter you guys today if you just let him in. For those of you that feel something on your body, you feel different. You feel energy, you feel power, your body's shaking. You feel something going on in your stomach. I just want you to raise your hand. If you feel something in your body right now, I want you to raise your hand and wave it at me. All right. Right there, I bless you in Jesus' name. More, Lord. More. Yep, more. Yeah. All right. Who else is feeling something in their body right now? Mm. Yes, more in Jesus' name. I bless you in Jesus' name. Hmm. There is also anxiety in my family, depression in my family. If you're dealing with any of those things, I'd like you to stand right now in Jesus' name. No judgment. There are so many people dealing with those things. If you're by them, you put your hand on them, and you just say, I bless you in Jesus' name. He wants to heal you. The Lord is here. I can barely stand as I say these words. Lord, would you touch each one of them? If you are overwhelmed right now, or if you are feeling something and you are standing, I want you to wave your hands at me. Yes, I bless you in Jesus' name more, Lord. Yes, I bless you in Jesus' name. Lord, would they encounter you in a new way? <clears throat> someone in my family is just diagnosed with diabetes. If you or someone in your family has diabetes, would you please stand? <laughs> Wave your hand at me so I can see so everyone can see you. Okay, over here. Put your hand on her, please. Who else? Right there, right here. You put your hand on them and you say, I bless you in Jesus' name. If you'd like to pray, you can pray. <clears throat> this is what the Lord wants. Everybody, every single person in here can pray and can bless someone else. It just takes a yes, and the Lord will honor that. I have friends, I have family, I have people, people that are dealing with broken relationships. 
So if you're dealing with one or if you, someone in your family is separated or divorced or is, is mourning over the loss of someone, would you stand please? And put your hand up so I can see you. Over here. Over here, guys. Put your hand on them over here. And you say, I bless you in Jesus' name. And you just pray over what the Lord wants to do with that. Right over here. I bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord is uh, speaking to people about anxiety around decisions, the uncertainty of not knowing if it will all work out. Thank you. He just wants you to know it's never too late. He cares more about your future than you do. <laughs> For people that have felt alone and isolated, unsupported, if that's you, please stand up right now. And just know that half of everyone right now is standing up. So you are not alone. If you're feeling unsupported and alone, please stand and wave your hand to me so I can see you. We just want to encourage you, want to love you right here. Down second row, Kevin, right next to you. Yep. Anyone else? Over here in the back, please, if you're around them, For those of you that I just spoke to, put your hand on your heart, okay? And if you didn't stand up and you're feeling that, put your hand on your heart. You don't have to stand. We are joining our faith together, and we are loving one another into healing. You feel unsupported, and you're not used to someone having your back. You've even said that you feel no one has your back. With your hand on your heart, just close your eyes. Your hand on your heart. The Lord wants you to know that he has you. That he has your back. He wants you to know what it feels like to have him. To have his support. As you hear this, you're, some of you should be feeling a sensation in your back. He is melting your back pain right now, in Jesus' name. If that's you, I'd like for you to wave at me. That was very specific. Right here, in Jesus' name, three people, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. More. 100% healing. Thank you that they are not alone. Thank you, Lord, that you are with them, that you love them. Hmm. that you want more for their life. You're not done. You, you're not done. He has so much more for you. Hmm. Bless him, Lord. Bless his dreams in Jesus' name. I have insomnia also in my family. People are dealing with anybody that has trouble sleeping uh, or having issues with their dreams. Uh, stand up and let me see you, please. Right here. Back here, guys. Okay, these two. Who else? Right, right over here. Guys, if you're around them, just step out. Lay your hands on them. All you have to do is just bless them. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Lord, I speak to these people that are drawing near to you and you are drawing near to them, I speak to their houses. I bless them. I speak to their minds and command them to slow down. I command their bodies to rest as they lay their heads down. We speak against all attacks of the enemy and we just command them to just fall at your feet. 
we bless their dream life, that they wouldn't be afraid to fall asleep because of what they would see, that, Lord, you would show them heaven, that you would take them up, you would show them amazing things. <laughs> so we speak shalom, peace, nothing missing, nothing broken to their entire bodies in Jesus' name. <clears throat> For anyone that has felt any kind of sensation today or um, maybe I prayed over something and some of them are emotional so I know it's hard to see but if you if you uh, if it's something in your body that I prayed for and you notice a difference I just want you to test out your body and see um, if you feel any different um, and and if you feel something different in your body I just want you to raise your hand and wave at me like if you feel like maybe 80% better maybe I didn't even pray for anything um, it doesn't matter what it is 80% better just wave your hand at me all right thank you Lord for Five. One, uh, a, a couple more words uh, that I received, uh, and, and if you're if you're if you're standing and you're like, man, I didn't really feel anything or um, nothing really happened. I just want you to sit in your seat and put your hand on your heart and close your eyes. The Lord is going to continue to work on you. Just don't worry about anything else. He doesn't miss anyone. He loves every single one of you. Uh, a couple other, two other words I had, uh, carpal tunnel. Oh, anybody dealing with carpal tunnel? Okay. Uh, I, I felt it, uh, a lot of pain. So uh, thank you. Just go over there. Just, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Any other carpal tunnels? All right, Amanda, we bless your body. The Lord has done so much, and he's going to continue to do more. You are so strong. <laughs> Even when you feel like you're not. But the Lord is asking you, or telling you, you don't have to be strong. He's made perfect in your weakness. So we just bless your body. We bless your um muscular system the the ligaments the cartilage the nerves everything even some kind of bone that's not aligned right we just command that to be made straight in jesus name all pain must go peace uh uh last one i was feeling some uh, right glute injury uh it was burning I was feeling a burning sensation in my in my glutes. So if anybody has any, uh, could have been sciatic. So if anybody has any lower, yeah, sciatic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, sciatic pain, stand up and anybody. All right. Right here. Yeah. I bless you in Jesus name. Command all sciatic pain to go. Anybody that has back pain. If you have back pain at all, I don't care. Stand up. Who cares if it's not exactly what the Lord gave you? The Lord is, is way bigger than that. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> you just put your hand on him and you say, I command all back pain to go in Jesus' name. That's it. <clears throat> Lord, would you lift up your people right now? Would you bring strength to their body? Guys, this is what the Lord wants. Every single one of you has the power to just bless someone and pray for them in Jesus' name and see them restored. So I come to you broken with all the things that I have going on. And if I can do that, What's possible for you guys? So I just bless you all in Jesus' name.